back again. Welcome to another episode of Pet Pals, um, where we're going to introduce you to some of the adoptable animals here at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. My name is Bethany Davidson, and our animal wrangler is one of our dedicated volunteers, Tammy Benson. Now, I realized last week that, week that I was remiss in saying that um, you're going to see some different things going on with our set. Um, we are in the process of having an artist come in and, and paint this, um, so it's going to uh, hopefully look more like a, a nice home environment instead of uh, just being a boring wall for, for all of our viewers. So bear with us as the, the set changes throughout the weeks as she finishes working on that project. Our first guest here is Benji, and he is one of our shy dogs. Um, you know, a lot of us uh, who work here and are volunteers, we all have favorites, and Benji um, right now is our shelter director, Linda Shea's favorite dog. So she gave me a little insight into this guy. He is a one to two year old terrier mix. He's uh, white and cream, and he did come to us as a stray. Uh, he's pretty fearful, but after a while he he warms up. It just, you know, takes a little patience and a little time to get com for him to get comfortable with with new people. Um, his favorite treats tend to be um, he likes bologna and cheese. He likes Chick Fil A chicken nuggets. Uh, not so much a fan of uh, boring, you know, dry dog treats. And he also does not enjoy Fritos. We've learned that about him so far. Um, but as you can see, you know, with Tammy, who's here. Uh, almost daily working with the dogs. Um, he's very comfortable with people once he gets to know you. Um, it is just gonna be a little bit of uh, an adjustment period uh, for him. According to our kennel techs, um, he's very friendly when he, he knows you, but he can be cautious when you approach him. Um, he uh, has no reaction to other dogs. Um, you know, they put a dog that was whining and whimpering and barking next to him, and he just was perfectly happy. Um, no reaction um, with that dog next to him. Um, he's easy to obtain. He uh, can be shy. If, again, if he doesn't know you, take a little coaxing to get him leashed up. Uh, he nervously lags behind his handler when he's walking, so he just needs a confidence booster. And one thing that can help boost a dog's confidence is to work with them and, and train them. Um, that gives them that sense of pride, knowing that they've accomplished something, um, that they can do it and they can get a reward for doing things. Um, but it also um, it gives them mentally stimulated um, and helps keep them safe. Uh, you know, dogs who know things like sit and and stay and don't dart out the door and, and can walk nicely. Um, it makes them safer when they're out in the community and when they're at home. If you're interested in uh, making Benji part of your family, you can come in and visit with him here at Animal Control. Our address is 1832 Rosemont Avenue. Our next dog definitely isn't shy. Um, this is Remy and she's about seven months old now and she is a golden retriever pit bull mix. We just have her down as a pit mix um, and she came to us uh, as an owner surrender um, and now she's here um, hoping to find a, a home to spend the rest of her life. Um, she is a high energy dog. She's kind of goofy. Uh, she loves to play. Um, she has shown us that she knows uh, sit, she knows paw, um, but she is gonna be a dog that needs to work on her manner. So a little training goes a long way with these guys and uh, that's something that we would definitely recommend for Remy because she is so young. It, 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 uh, once you start it, it'll, it'll make life a lot smoother because um, you know, she's a puppy and it's up to us to train our puppies uh, to behave as we think is appropriate, just like we would not let our kids, you know, misbehave. We don't want to let our animals uh, do that either. Um, she was, as I mentioned, she was relinquished. So um, some information from uh, the previous owner, they say that she does get along with, with cats. It says that she doesn't get along with female pits. Um, you know, Anytime you're looking to add another dog to your home, we do ask you to bring your dog in to meet with, with our dog just to see how it goes. Um, we can kind of make a, de a decision based on what we see um, as to whether or not it's something that's gonna work. So um, don't be deterred by the fact that if you have a, another female dog, you can just bring them in and we can see uh, how they do, do together. Um, she's lived with cats before. It says she's uh, playful, energetic, friendly, walks on a leash, rides in a car, she's used to bass. Um, it does say she is a chewer and a chaser, which are things that can be worked on through training. Um, you know, knowing what's appropriate to chew on. You chew on toys, not furniture, not shoes, not anything else. Um, so working um, with that. Um, they say that she likes to chase balls. She likes stuffed toys. Um, she likes all kinds of, 
um, toys. She's a puppy. She likes pretty much everything. They say that she's crate trained and house trained. However, she's not been keeping her kennel clean here. So a refresher um, in house training is going to be necessary for her. Um, she reacts favorably to other uh, to other dogs. She's easy to obtain. She can pull um, when she's walking, so a harness would be beneficial for her and, and just working on polite leash walking. Um, she likes to be petted. And, you know, Overall, she's uh, a great dog with a lot of potential, but as a puppy, she will need uh, some training moving forward. Uh, because she is a puppy, she will be adopted through our puppy process, which means we'll take up to four applications and choose the best fit for her, uh, and then her adoption fee is $150. This handsome hound is Buster, and he is uh, one of our adult dogs at two and a half years old. Um, things that you would notice if you saw Buster here at the shelter. He is super friendly. He's like in your face friendly. He wants to be everybody's best friends. Um, you'll also notice um, that he has um, some abrasions on his tail. Um, you'll see some you know, bloody spots on there, and you'll see that his kennel is covered and padded. Um, with blankets and that's because um, Buster is a happy guy and he has what's known as happy tail. Um, so when his tail is constantly going back and forth and he's so happy and the harder it whips back and forth it hits the, the sides of his kennel um, and then it can crack and bleed um, on top of um, because it's, it's hitting that. So we have protected him by patting his kennel so that when he gets super excited when visitors come by and he's wagging his tail, his tail's gonna hit on those soft things instead. And he is being treated uh, for that, so that is something that we're aware of. Um, and you know we're monitoring that and um, you'll see that there are actually a couple of dogs on our adoption floor right now with that happy tail problem, um, which I guess is not such a bad problem because it shows how, um, you know, how happy they are uh, to be here and to be loved by our staff and volunteers while they're looking for their new forever homes. Now, what brought Buster here to us? Um, Buster has an affinity for chasing horses. Um, so um, he was living on a property where there were horses and he was chasing them to excess, um, which was not great for the horses. So um, Buster is here looking for a home that is horse free. So we're saying that he can his new home cannot have any uh, large animals, no farms, nothing like that, um, so that he um, is not going to be um, put in a position where he has to, you know, fulfill his desire to chase those animals. He is a, a red sable and white hound mix. Um, he is about 60 pounds. Um, he has lived with other dogs before as well as cats. Um, it says he's playful, energetic, friendly. He walks slicey on a leash. Um, he rides well on the car. Um, his owner said that he is not house trained nor crate trained. However, here he seems to keep his kennel pretty clean. But again, as we've mentioned with other dogs on the show today, it is important uh, to treat your animals as if they're not uh, house trained and work on that as soon as you get them home with you. Our behavior assessment for him has him again as, as and it's plainly uh, obvious to most people he's incredibly friendly um, he is one of those higher energy dogs that's going to need um, somebody who's willing to take him out and play with him um, he is going to be adoptable here for our standard adoption fee for adult dogs which is $92.50 if you're interested in him you can stop by we are open to the public Monday through Saturday how does a dog stand out on the adoption floor well it's easy for Ella and uh, I just have one word ears um, Ella's ears definitely make her stand out. She is one of our puppies on the adoption floor. Now, when I say puppy, um, puppies, people think that that means like three and four month old puppies. Um, we typically don't get those types of, of young, young puppies. We get older puppies. So um, we had Remy on the show who's about seven months old. And now we have Ella who's about eight to 10 months old, um, somewhere in that range. Just like um, those younger puppies, she needs to be taught what is appropriate behavior and not, how to sit, how to stay, how to walk nicely on the leash, how not to, to jump up on people. And another really important thing for puppies is um, that you socialize them. It's a lot easier to socialize them and get used to the world and, and know that the world isn't a scary place when they're younger um, than it is when they're, they're older. Um, so, you know, new people, um, different types of people, people who are tall, people who are short, hats, sunglasses, um, skateboards, bicycles, all those types of things puppies need to be exposed to so they can learn that they're not uh, things to be afraid of. Uh, Ella did come to us as a stray and so, so you know we're still learning things about her but um, based on our behavior assessment that we've done for her she needs 
Um, a little bit of a refresher with house training. Sometimes she keeps her kennel clean, sometimes she doesn't. Um, she's excited and jumps up when people approach her. She does react favorably to other dogs walking past her kennel. Um, she is difficult to obtain because she's juppy and excited, just like she's showing right now. She's a puppy. And uh, she um, is difficult to walk for the same reasons. She's jumpy and pulls and she's excited. So a harness, I always recommend them for all dogs. You know, I think they're much easier, much more convenient. You don't have to worry about the dogs pulling and then, um, uh, having issues with it, you know, hurting their necks and their throats. Um, and it makes, you know, gives you a little bit more control as well as making other people, you know, feel a little bit more comfortable when they're, they're walking past you. Um, she doesn't have issues with food aggression. Um, we were unable to test her for object guarding because she didn't like the toy that we gave her. But as you're seeing right now, she is a fan of toys and likes to play with any and everything. Um, she leans in and enjoys being petted at first, but then she becomes playfully aroused and she wants to play and jump around and, and kind of get in your face a little bit. Um, so, you know, just like any of the other puppies on our adoption floor, she's going to be a bit of a project dog because um, she needs to, to be taught what's appropriate behavior. Um, and we have seen today, um, you know, our cameraman is a, a big, tall guy and she was a little fearful of him. So um, socializing her is going to be really important. Our final canine guests today are dogs that have been on the show. I want to say this is their third appearance um, because they're still here and we want to find them a nice, loving home. Uh, they've changed quite a bit since they've uh, been on the show last. Um, Buddy has trimmed down to a nice weight. He's lost a couple pounds, which is good for Buddy. And Gracie has kind of come out of her shell a little bit. Uh, she was really shy when she first got here, and um, she really relies on um, Buddy to make her feel safe. But she's starting to be more open and and uh, able to, to kind of show off her, her own distinct personality. They are a bonded pair. They rely on each other, they love each other. Um, separating them would be uh, emotionally unhealthy for them. So we will only be adopting them together. Uh, these guys are really fun in the play yard. Uh, they both love to play. Uh, Fetch is one of Buddy's favorite games. He likes tug. Um, Gracie likes to, you know, chase after balls and chew on them and play with toys as well. Um, they are both spectacularly photogenic and they are motivated um, not just by treats, which is great, but they are also very toy motivated. So uh, a tennis ball in the air will get them to smile. Um, and they, you know, they really are just uh, loving and sweet and it's, it, it's hard to take on two dogs for some people, but um, we've had many, many of our past adopters um, writing on Buddy and Gracie's posts on Facebook saying, you know, how they love their bonded pairs and they encourage everybody to do it um, if they can and, and not to be um, worried about taking on two because they do get along so it's going to be an easier transition. They're going to be less stressed in a, a new home environment because they have each other uh, to make them feel comfortable and safe. And uh, these guys really do get along very well. Um, they are one of the pairs of dogs that have happy tail. Um, Gracie's got some happy tail issues just like we talked about um, with Buster. So they have a padded kennel. Um, you will see some uh, red spot, um, a kind of abrasion on her tail. Um, just like with him, um, we're keeping all of their fur on there so it adds a little bit of extra protection and we're, we're keeping an eye on, on that. Um, Gracie does like to destroy toys so she can't have uh, lots of stuffies unattended because she will devour them. Um, but she can have them when somebody's supervising her just to make sure that she doesn't swallow any pieces. Um, because they are a bonded pair, you get $20 off for taking home two. Um, Buddy is three years old and Gracie is four. She's a boxer mix. He's a beagle mix. Um, you know, some people say, well, there, there's a big size disparity there. there. There's not really, like in the scheme of things, she's, it's not definitely, uh, definitely not the biggest difference in size that we've seen. We want to thank you for watching our canine portion of the show. Um, we have lots of dog lovers, but uh, if you're more of a cat person, uh, stay tuned after the break. We're going to introduce you to a handful of our adoptable cats here at uh, Frederick County Animal Control.
Child abuse is not an isolated problem. It affects each of us, and it is only through each of us that child abuse can be prevented. Get involved. Call the Child Advocacy Center to find out how to help. 301-600-1758. Welcome back. As we mentioned last week, uh, November is Adopt a Senior Pet Month. So um, we have a couple of seniors that we're going to showcase for you today. And the first of those guys is Sam, and he is 11 years old. And uh, Sam was relinquished to us because his owner was unable to take care of him. And he kind of has um, a sad slash happy story um, in that uh, the owner brought him in. She you know, was unable to take care of him. He had fleas, he's overweight, he's a senior at 11. And she um, didn't realize that um, you know, he could still have a, a very happy life. And she actually was you know, bringing him here because she wanted to get him uh, euthanized. She wanted us to put him to sleep because you know, she thought that was gonna be in his best interest. But our staff in the back at intake um, took the time to educate her and say, you know, no, um, you know, 11's really not that old for a senior cat. Um, that, you know, we can fix the flea problem and, you know, a little diet and exercise can help him, um, you know, be, be at a better weight where he can be more comfortable. Um, he's a very friendly cat. So um, the decision was then made to relinquish him instead of euthanize him. And uh, he is on our adoption floor where we can find somebody uh, to take him on and make him part of their family who can, you know, continue his, um, you know, flea treatment. Um, he's um, flea free right now, but you want to stick with your flea and tick preventatives, um, get him down to a nice weight and he can have a, a great retirement home, um, you know, Cats can live anywhere from 10 to 20 years, you know, it just depends. So um, you don't want to say that uh, Sam doesn't have a lot of uh, good years left. We recently um, had a, a cat that was adopted from us that was 17 and her owner wrote in saying how much she loved her senior cat and how um, active she is now and, and how she um, wants to encourage other people to take on senior animals as well. Uh, all of our senior pets are going to be adopted for a fee of just $50. Um, so that's any cat that's five and up. But uh, because of Sam here being over 10, he will actually go home for an adoption fee of just $30. Uh, so if you're interested in making a wonderful senior pet part of your family, now is a great time to do that. Um, he has lived with other cats, he has lived with dogs, he's lived with children of all ages. Um, he's a lap cat, which he's, you know, had. Uh, no trouble acclimating to being on Tammy's lap here. They say he's calm, he's independent. Um, so he is a wonderful cat um, who will fit in nicely in any family. Um, so if you're interested in uh, wonderful Sam here, you can stop in and visit at uh, 1832 Rosemont Avenue. These next guys are definitely not seniors. They are um, young adult cats, you know, teenagers. They have plenty of energy. Uh, these guys are Noah and Grayson. They are eight month old boys. Uh, so over here with me is Grayson. And then over there with Tammy is Noah. And the interesting thing about these guys is that um, they came in as a uh, part of four, kit four kittens. Uh, the other kittens are four months old and basically they look exactly the same. So we have two sets of twins that look exactly the same uh, in the, the the playpen there. So um, there's a younger one named Marty who looks like Grayson. Uh, and then there's a younger one that looks like uh, Noah named Doc. Uh, Doc is the only female in there. So um, if you're looking for cats that look the same, if you're looking um, for some adorable little cats, uh, they're a great place to look. And uh, you can get one older, one younger. Uh, you can, you know, get two that look exactly the same. There's lots to choose from there. Uh, they are just 
one of many sets of kittens that we have on the adoption floor right now. Um, all of our kittens are starting to come back from foster care, so there's a lot to choose from, whether you're looking for girls, boys, really super active, more cuddly, more calm. Um, if you're looking for torties, if you're looking for black ones, white ones, um, we have a little bit of everything on the adoption floor right now, so it's a great time to come in and look if you're looking for kittens. All of our cats and kittens are adopted for a standard fee of $97.50. That makes sure that all of the animals are spayed or neutered before they leave. They are microchipped. They get their county license, rabies vaccine, distemper, bordetella uh, for dogs, that is, um, dewormer, flea and tick prevented, and a well visit to the vet. So you really can't beat what you're, what you're getting for that price. Um, these guys are relatively new, so we're still learning all about them, um, but they seem to enjoy cuddling with one another. They like spending time um, with each other, and they're still fairly active. Um, as you can see, they're curious. They want to get down. They want to explore. Um, so they're just your typical kittens. Um, if you're interested in these guys or any of the many kittens on our adoption floor, the first step is going to be to, to come in and visit with them. And you can do that Monday through Saturday here at 1832 Rosemont Avenue. Our next little guy is named Cosmo and he's a year old. He's got the cutest little face um, and he loves attention. Uh, he loves to purr, um, which is great because um, he's also declawed. And sometimes um, when you declaw an animal and you, you, you know, amputate their, their, their paws and um, it, can, it can change their personality. But fortunately for Cosmo here, um, his personality's kind of remained intact and he's relatively unscathed. And we're all very happy for that so that we can hopefully find him a nice new loving home. Uh, Cosmo was formerly Joe. He was here as a kitten last year and was adopted out. Um, we do not advocate declawing here. It is an amputation of the digits. It can affect their personalities. Um, it can make them bite. It can make them fearful and shy. It can make them uh, stop using their litter box. Um, it, it can affect their ability to walk properly. Um, we always educate um, our adopters not to declaw, and that was done in this case. We, um, you know, if we think that you know it can be avoided, then. Um, we will send them home if we think that they're likely to declaw. We likely will um, go with another adopter for one of our many cats on our floor. Um, but unfortunately, um, despite the education that we provided with this adopter, they decided to declaw Cosmo anyway. And uh, unfortunately now, after he's had that procedure done, he's back to the shelter. Uh, the reason that Cosmo was brought back, because they said that he was continuously going to the bathroom on their carpet. So we've talked about this many, many times. It's a very popular reason for relinquishing an animal. Um, sometimes um, when kittens or cats are declawed, their feet hurt after that procedure, obviously. So when they go to the litter box, it hurts. And therefore, they associate going to the bathroom in the box with pain, and they don't use the box. They want to go somewhere else because they think in, in their minds it's not going to hurt. Um, I don't think that this is the reason why Cosmo stopped using his litter box because he uses his litter box here. Um, the reason that I think Cosmo stopped using his litter box is because they said that they only clean their litter box weekly. We clean litter boxes here at the shelter daily and that is our recommendation to all of our adopters who are taking home felines. Um, we clean them out at least once a day. We also have volunteers who will clean out any messes that they see, so sometimes they get done uh, two and three times a day. Cosmo will be adopted for a fee of $97.50, and you can visit him here at 1832 Rosemont Avenue on Monday through Saturday. We are lucky enough to be able to have our next guest on the show today. She's been a pet of the week before. Um, but we had to go to her foster home to get that footage because Stella is one of our foster cats. Her foster mom is on vacation this week, so she's hanging out here with us. So um, it's a great time for people to be able to come and visit with her and get to know her um, here in the shelter environment. She is a seven-year-old uh, domestic short hair, and she is a beautiful Torby. She's kind of got that silver color to her. She's very unique. I've never seen a cat that looks quite like Stella uh, here at the shelter or ever before. Um, Stella lives in foster care for a couple of really important reasons. Uh, she is one of our longest residents, so it's always good for long-term residents to, to have a, a nicer place to stay. But more importantly, when Stella was living here at the shelter, she 
was very, very stressed. It happened to be during our renovation, so there was lots of noise, um, things were very kind of unpredictable, and Stella was very upset by that. That mixed in with an undiagnosed food allergy um, caused her to overgroom. So when they have that food allergy, they get itchy, so then they lick at stuff, and then she was stressed, so then she was licking more, and it was kind of one of those vicious cycles. Um, and she ultimately licked a, a majority of the fur off of her body. Uh, so she had to wear a cone of shame. Um, she had to go on some um, anxiety medication, some medication to help her fur grow back and, and deal with those um, allergies. And now, um, you know, from February to November, Stella is um, off most of her medication. Her fur is grown back and uh, she is back to being a normal cat. But because we don't want to risk any changes, um, we don't want to put her in another stressful environment, she still maintains her home and her foster and foster care. Stella is your typical cat who wants to do things when she wants to do them. Um, she's fairly independent, um, but she has taken ownership of her foster mom's house and she likes to sit on the couch and watch TV at night. She currently lives with two other cats. Um, and she tolerates them. They're kind of indifferent to one another. They don't cuddle, they don't really play, um, but she can live in a home with other animals. Um, her exposure to dogs, um, we're not sure what that is. Her foster mom doesn't have dogs, and she came to us as a stray, so we don't know what that experience is. Um, the, the most important thing about Stella is that she does have a very special diet. Um, because she is allergic to um, uh, several types of things, I believe seafood and chicken are some of the things that she's allergic to. She is on a duck and pea diet, so that could be more expensive to provide that food for her. Um, you can't leave food down for the other animals because she could get into that and then she could start that, that grooming again. And as one of our seniors, Stella would be able to be adopted for that $50 fee uh, in November. Our last guest for you today is one of our torties. This is Fyra, and she's a one to two years old. Uh, she also came to us as a stray, and uh, she has been um, pretty calm and relaxed since she's been here. Um, she is a beautiful cat, and uh, just for whatever reason hasn't gotten noticed yet. She's quickly becoming one of the volunteer favorites. Every time I walk by, I feel like somebody's visiting with her. She likes the attention. Um, she has, is gonna be spayed before she leaves. We're gonna make sure she gets her rabies vaccine, distemper. Um, we've microchipped her. She's gonna go home with a county license. Uh, she's gonna get flea and tick preventative, uh, which she's already gotten. She's been dewormed. Um, and you also get a free well visit to the vet. So you can't beat what you're gonna get for just $97.50. Plus you get a great lap cat with a good personality. Um, I do um, know that she um, is on a special diet plan uh, right now. I'm not sure the exact reasons, but if you were to uh, wanna make Sapphire a part of your home, it's gonna be good to talk to our staff, um, make sure that we, you're understanding why she, um, she has limited access to food. So just making sure that you understand all of those things and whether it's gonna be long-term. Do you have other cats in the house that have free access to food, those types of things. Um, but otherwise, um, she hasn't had any issues that I'm aware of. Um, you know, sometimes the other cats will hiss at um, the other animals when they see each other in the, in the cages. Uh, she doesn't really do that. She gives lots of people, you know, boops, um, kisses on the nose and all kinds of things like that. So she's just, a, uh, as far as we can tell, a very social, happy cat. Um, because there's so many kittens to choose from right now, it's really hard for uh, not just our seniors to get adopted, but just our adult cats in general, because people like kittens. And kittens are great, and they're cute and cuddly, and they can be lots of fun, um, but they're also a lot of work, and ultimately, they grow up. They turn into adult cats like Sapphira here. And you can skip that entire kitten stage where they don't know what's appropriate as far as where to scratch and they climb curtains and they wake you up in the middle of the night. You can skip all of that and go to a sweet, um, loving, what, and apparently uh, great lap cat here. We want to thank you for tuning in today and watching um, this episode of Pet Pals, and we hope that you'll continue to watch and meet adoptable pets um, each week as we uh, introduce you to FCAC's adoptable animals. Mm -hmm.